is the statement I'm trying to prove, all right? So there are basically three if and only statements. Uh, so, but the thing is, the main statement is this guy, this statement, if equivalent to this statement, all right? So therefore, uh, there are two parts of this proof. One part showing that P if and only if Q implies P if and only if not Q, all right? And this is part one. And then the second part is P if and only if not Q implies P if and only if Q. All right. So therefore, in in the, 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 this the the, the uh, there 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 will be I don't know how many. Uh, do I know the solution? No, I don't. Uh, so I I think there are like 20, 30 lines for this proof. Half of it is going to go for the first part. Half of it is going to go for the second part. So the first part you have to assume this, and then show this. In the second part you have to assume this, and then show this. All right, that that's what you are supposed to do. Well, this is where these guys are going to come into play. Okay, uh, how so? Well, there is, by the way, another uh, argument which I did not prove because it's not an if and only, well, it is an if, if and only if argument, but you know, one direction is obvious. It's by condition uh, inference rule. So I said P if and only if Q, is if and only if equivalent to saying P implies Q and Q implies P, right? So this direction, I ask you to prove it. This direction is, well, by conditional rule. I mean, it's, it's obvious in that sense. So therefore, P if and only if Q is actually equivalent to this guy. That means when you try to prove this and assume, for example, this part um, or this part, you know how to write it down, all right, as an end statement. And then, so these basically four arguments helps you sort of break these statements into a smaller pieces. Uh, you also, for example, know what P implies Q means, right? According to uh, this, the third argument, P implies Q is in fact this guy, not P or Q, all right? So if there's an negation in front of it somewhere, you know how to distribute it thanks to argument one or two. So therefore, the proof of this theorem is going to be much easier when you use arguments one, two, three, and four. Uh, but nevertheless, use them or not, uh, the, 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 you have to make this argument, you have to prove this argument in two parts. The first part is if then statement, and then the second part, well, this then part, and then the if part. Okay? Um...